Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. As always, leaving a comment, leaving a like, or subscribing does help the channel very, very much and all those things are appreciated. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. At the moment, the current sentiment around the cryptocurrency market is quite high, as one would imagine. It says Bitcoin futures basis hints at possible disbelief rally. There's a lot of news floating around that this is not the end, if you will, that people are expecting the market to have a lot more gains. Uh, we've been seeing the number 47,000 pop up a lot of places within the cryptocurrency Bitcoin price market, uh, basically discussing especially the news that we had about two days ago that by the end of this month, we will either have an above $50,000 Bitcoin and or have Bitcoin at a brand new all-time high. That seems to be a very common sentiment that I see floating around at the moment. For those of you who do not know what a disbelief rally is, uh, this was a huge topic of conversation many years ago. When you look at the actual movements of a bull in a bear market, there's like an actual chart and it shows the you know euphoric phase. It like really skyrockets up and then things begin to fall back down. Everyone is you know still in disbelief that the market is falling down, but the actual disbelief rally comes where We've been down in the trenches for so long. Everyone's like, the market's not moving. The market's not going anywhere. The market's super boring. And we sit that the market is going back up. And in disbelief, we sit there not really believing that the market is going to move back up. And then lo and behold, it does. And then we end up hitting all new highs and prices and stuff like that. And then the euphoric phase once again enters the market. And that's why we call it a cycle. However, today, for some reason, the most popular cryptocurrency price news was about Ethereum. I found, I think, one or two articles discussing Bitcoin's price. Everything else was discussing Ethereum, how high Ethereum was going to go, where Ethereum was going to go next. Uh, as far as I could tell, over the last 24 hours or so, there was no real um, upgrade news, update news, anything else outside of what we've normally been talking about with Ethereum. So why the news all focused on Ethereum today? I'm not really sure. It says Ethereum price analysis, Ethereum reclaims $3,200. It says Ethereum price aims for $3,600 as daily RSI indicates a bullish bias. This one says technical analysis, Ethereum gearing up for another liftoff to $3,500 rally isn't over yet. I assume this one is also relatively the same. Yep, crypto winter is thawing and with Bitcoin and Ethereum rebounding signal, with rebound signal. Okay, that's also worded kind of odd. So yeah, um, as it stands right now, the market is apparently super hyper mega bullish according to all the articles that are going around out there. The cryptocurrency market is still incredibly undervalued for exactly what's going on, the usage, the news that we keep getting behind the scenes. There's also some really crazy news in this video, which also doesn't exactly match up to uh, how, so, for, so backing it up, prices are up still, they're still in the green, but they should be a lot higher just based off of the news that we've been getting over the last couple of days. And also yesterday, and also today's news. And uh, to not be left out, this was the only one I found it says XRP ignites ultra bullish trajectory. Ripple pr predicts 2022 is going to be a big year. We get a lot of news all the time uh, from something that Garlinghouse said or the other guy who's always sitting on stage saying something uh, or about the lawsuit that's going on. And, you know, sure, cool. It's nice to have some bullish XRP news once again because we haven't had it in about two and a half years. Just kind of waiting me myself for April to see if this lawsuit will actually be completely done with so that we can uh, finally not have it, it's kind of like I'm I'm exhausted with um, SEC ETF news uh, is XRP going to move after the SEC loss a lot of SECs in there and there's something else also to do with the SEC and it's like alrighty anyway that's all the price news that's really all the price news not really much else to cover except for for some reason today everyone's extremely bullish on Bitcoin and then a lot on Ethereum. And without further ado, let us move on. In uh, You Know You're Living in the Future When News, 
The iconic American restaurant McDonald's looks like it is preparing to make a move into the metaverse by registering for 10 trademarks in the virtual space. Trademark attorney and founder of Gerben Intellectual Property, his name is Josh Gerben, logically, tweeted today that McDonald's submitted a trademark application on the 4th of February, including plans for a virtual restaurant featuring actual and virtual goods and operating a virtual restaurant featuring home delivery. Like I said, living in the future. Based on the application, the restaurant chain will be able to provide downloadable multimedia files for artwork, audio and video files, and NFTs. McDonald's also included its McCafe brand in the Metaverse trademark application. The brand would be ready to offer entertainment services, namely providing online, actual, and virtual concerts and other virtual events. (laughs) Sorry. Could McCafe become the new branded virtual destination to catch a sponsored concert from one of your favorite acts? Oh, gosh. I didn't even think of that. That's going to be the weirdest thing in the entire world when your friends are like, hey, you want to hang out in the metaverse tonight? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. And then I get like the the pop-up, it says like, you're invited to McDonald's and we have to go sit inside of a virtual McDonald's watching, insert pop star name here, uh, that evening. Um, So this was not the most popular news. However, as you might have expected, this is quite popular. I mean, all over the place, popular news. This follows relatively closely, if you might remember. I'm I'm certain this is just me. Uh, McDonald's has been in, air quotes, the cryptocurrency space for a while. We've seen them chatting on Twitter with other prominent cryptocurrency people, making jokes. They were also part of the entire uh, shebang a couple of weeks ago where prices were down and some of the prominent players in the space were on Twitter making memes about having to go back to work at McDonald's and McDonald's was also making memes about the cryptocurrency market going down about, you know, uh, the whole back and forth. So, um, this is as weird to me as, what was the other one? No, it wasn't Samsung. Was it a supermarket? There was some other company who no more than a month ago announced that they were also getting into the metaverse where you'd be able to go shopping in, it was H&M. And I was like, why? Why would anyone want to go, like, if you could do anything? Imagine, close your eyes. Imagine being able to do anything you want. Now, you can do that in a metaverse. Why in the goodness would you want to spend your digital time being able to fly around, literally, going shopping, looking through aisles at H&M. It just doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. And I know it's going to be popular because anything that doesn't make sense always ends up being popular. So get ready in about five years. Uh, you and your friends may be sitting on a couch walking. Th- uh, if you have I, ooh, if you have to stand online inside of the virtual McDonald's, I don't know what I would do with myself. That would be the most authentic experience in the entire world. Imagine for a moment McDonald's has an actual like, you know, metaverse restaurant store and you can walk left and watch Beyonce or Ariana Grande, what's her name, singing on a stage or you could go to the other side and stand online behind five people ordering a cheeseburger. I feel like that's exactly what it's going to be like. Um, Here's the actual tweet for it right here where the guy found all the uh, information, and I mean the gigantic M, if that wasn't a, you know, a, a, a major giveaway. So, yeah, very popular news. Um, are any of you planning on spending a day in the McDonald's metaverse? Anybody out there? You, can, you don't have to lie. You can tell me if you are. You can, you know. I mean, if it's your favorite place of business to eat and you plan on definitely going there to eat some virtual fries. What a weird future we live in. It just it, it never gets normal, no matter how hard we try. Anyway, that's the McDonald's is either building their own metaverse, making trademarks, or planning on building on top of someone else's land to sell virtual um, burgers news. And yeah, let's move on. In the most popular news story of the day, the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, once again, the world's largest asset manager 
is looking to allow its clients to trade cryptocurrencies. Once again, because I'm pretty sure people in the back didn't hear me, the world's largest asset manager. We get news about this all the time. All the time. How people still aren't paying attention? I'm not really sure. The mega asset manager is looking to start its offering with client support trading before proceeding to offer its own credit facility for crypto trading as well. This is according to sources familiar with the plans. BlackRock has previously shown a favorable disposition to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. Did everyone hear that? Good. Just wanted to make sure because I know a lot of people still aren't paying attention to Bitcoin. Coindesk has reported that sources close to developments within BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager with over 10 trillion dollars in assets under management says that the firm has plans around cryptocurrencies the plan involve allowing its clients which include some of the biggest investment funds to trade cryptocurrencies through its integrated investment management platform called aladdin or aladdin depending on where you live in the world the service will allow blackrock's clients to borrow from the manager using crypto as collateral one of the sources said, another adds that a working group of as many as 20 persons has been set up to evaluate cryptocurrencies. We heard about BlackRock, I believe, for the first time in 2018, 2019. Remember, there were a number of large family offices who were just getting into the cryptocurrency space. Uh, BlackRock, I think, mistakenly uh, announced that they were getting into the cryptocurrency space, had to become interested. This was around the time when we had news that the Rockefeller family was buying up tons of Bitcoin as well. So, as mentioned many other times before, I know people, I, and, and I, if I can even break through to just 1% of people, my job will be done. Understand, BlackRock isn't a normal... If you have a chance, look at videos, and I, and I re they really, 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 and I know I say this every single video, but you have to, you know, do your own research. Like, it helps your brain out a lot. Find videos on exactly how big BlackRock is. I don't think you understand what $10 trillion actually means. That is the, the wealth and worth of a huge amount of countries smashed together that BlackRock alone would be able to buy. It's like, like you're, you're mine, I'm, I'm buying you. I now own these entire countries. So anyway, this is the most popular news story of the day. Um, it may be time for a number of people out there to begin to reevaluate the coins that are in their portfolios because one coin is consistently the winner over and over and over. If it wasn't, it would not be in the news as often as it currently is. If there were other coins that these mega institutions were buying, I assume that would also be very prominently in the news. However, it's always around one coin constantly, and I know that there are tons of people out there. If you could tell me exactly why, and I mean in the most honest, honest ways, why you do not own Bitcoin, I would love to know. Because I think in any other case, if we heard that BlackRock, Fidelity, the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, MicroStrategy, my, 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 my hand has run out of fingers to, to count on, was buying up Tesla stock. And I mean, imagine, I'm, I'm sure BlackRock owns some Tesla, but you understand. Like if, if Tesla had only been around for a couple of years, and we heard that they were getting into Tesla trading and were buying up tons of Tesla stock for themselves or Apple stock or any other company, I think a lot of people would pay attention. But for some reason, the name Bitcoin doesn't really get them going or they don't put two and two together and make a million dollars. And I really would love to understand why. Anyway, that's the BlackRock news. The largest asset manager on the planet, the richest company on this planet is getting into Bitcoin. It has already been into Bitcoin, and I'm certain that they hold Bitcoin either uh, through a company that looks like a seashell or uh, through some other um, subsidiaries that they also own because, you know, 
just logic. You don't offer this to your clients without having a lot of it yourself. That's the BlackRock news. Hope everybody's paying attention because I know a lot of people are not. And without further ado, let's move on. Also in the news, and it's like, okay, all right, sure, why not? El Salvador plans to issue its first $1 billion Bitcoin bond between the 15th of March and the 20th of March. This was said by Finance Minister Alejandro Zelaya on Tuesday. Speaking on a local TV show, Zelaya said that the bonds would be launched on Liquid, a Bitcoin-based service created by Blockstream that comes with a 6.5% coupon and matures in 2030. Uh, Liquid is the other side of what um, Lightning Network is. <clears throat> so Liquid is more for corporations, institutions, and a number of cryptocurrency exchanges actually use Liquid. Uh, it, it, as far as we know, has the same speed as the Lightning Network, is almost instantaneous transactions, zero fees, but it's more for the corporation use. And we don't hear about it as often because it's not really meant for us to be hearing about it. Zelaya stated, or Zelaya, I, I don't know, stated that the company is planning to issue $1 billion for the first bond as announced last November. However, he now expects it to be oversubscribed by about half a billion dollars at least. So this is news that, once again, we had sometime at the end of last year. Uh, but what's been missing that I haven't spoken about because it's also been in the news at least twice a week is that the International Monetary Fund has had a, a, a little bit of a talking to with El Salvador over this. You might have seen the news a little bit. Um, the IMF is not happy that not only have they announced that Bitcoin is legal tender within the country, but that they also plan on issuing Bitcoin bonds. Why does this sound familiar? In 2018, 2019, remember the three countries who went to the International Monetary Fund to say, hey, we need to start buying some Bitcoin and also issuing bonds against Bitcoin. And what did the IMF say? Uh-uh-uh. So they did not end up doing so. Now, this is the, the, the 2.0, the 3.0 of what was happening before. If this actually ends up going through, these will be the first Bitcoin bonds on the planet. Uh, I assume we are going to get more IMF uh, news screaming at them and stuff like that. Uh, not really a lot more to say. I, I think they're going to raise a tremendous amount of money. Every time before that we've seen any company announce that they were trying to raise $600 million to buy more Bitcoin or whatever the actual thing might have been. Uh, it, it, it was always two or three X, you know, we made 1.4 billion, even when we didn't want to make that much money before. So anyway, um, good luck to them. I'm sure it'll work out. I assume if they're announcing these numbers, they have been on phone conversations with a number of people who already are saying, Hey, we want to buy some of your Bitcoin bonds. Very fascinating. Yeah. That's the El Salvador news. And, oh, and, and we're still waiting for the uh, three other countries to be announced this year who are also going to be accepting Bitcoin as legal tender. Yeah. Let's move on. Next up, Gucky is doubling down on its commitment to the Metaverse, the designer clothing brand. There we go. Announced on Wednesday that it's bought an undisclosed amount of virtual land on the decentralized blockchain game known as the Sandbox. Gucky will create themed experiences on the Sandbox inspired by the Gucky Vault, which lists items such as Gucky-themed NFTs and vintage bags. In addition to a fashion focus. Metaverse Sparse Gucci also will be releasing fashion items from sa for sandbox players to purchase and wear in the game's virtual reality, they said. For a new generation of players, virtual fashion is, an important, is as important as real-life fashion. This was said by the COO and co-founder of The Sandbox. And here's the tweet for it right here. I'm not clicking that start button. If, if you haven't been paying attention to, and I and I don't blame you if you haven't. This is kind of a, a very niche thing, kind of the same exact way that not everyone's into fashion. Uh, digital fashion is taking off very, very fast. The idea being, when you go into these virtual lands, you will not want to look like yourself. Not saying that you look bad, but you understand. The idea is if you could be anything, you can be anything inside the metaverse. You want to be a, I don't know, whatever. The point is, um, a lot of companies have now jumped into the space. 
As far as like digital wearables, collectibles, and things like that, I know a couple of people, hello if you're watching, who are really into the space and they're doing a very good job, like super, super amazing things. Um, so we now have mega brands also getting into it as well. The idea being, once again, according to the thing that we saw yesterday, it is expected that within five years, 25% of the population will be living out a portion of their life inside of the metaverse. And then, you know, if people already wear high fashion label things in the real world, if you're spending eight hours a day inside of a metaverse, you'll also want to look cool, fly, and funky fresh in that world as well. So, yeah, this was actually low, low, low kind of popular news. A lot of people talking about it. They've also bought land in the 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 sandbox, uh, which is um, I, what other companies have also done that. Like for some reason, the the major companies tend to be aiming for the sandbox, and maybe just the name is a little bit quicker to say than other things. So cool! I'm excited to go to H and M in the metaverse uh, after having stood online to go get some fries. And then, you know, walking around in my Gucci platform slippers with my necklace that says Gucci on it because that just feels like where the future is going. Anyway, that's the Metaverse sandbox Gucci doubling down. They bought some land, an undisclosed amount of land, of course, because why would they tell us? Um, and yeah, let's move on. And to finish things off, the Central Bank of Ireland has stated that it is unlikely to approve investment funds for retail, normal, crypto investors because they lack the know-how to navigate the high-risk asset class. The February 2022 report called Securities Markets Risk Outlook Report a Changing Landscape described crypto assets as a new product offering in securities markets that is complex and a potential threat to investor protection. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Okay, good. Although the bank fielded many queries last year about alternative investment funds or AIF regarding crypto, it is now not expected to approve an AIF for retail crypto investors. The bank feels that such investments may be suitable for wholesale or, or just rich people but are too complicated for small fish. Mm -hmm. The central bank, they said, is highly unlikely to approve a UCITS or a retail investor AIF proposing any exposure to crypto assets, taking into account the specific risks attached to crypto ass assets. Wow, I almost said assessments. And the possibility that appropriate risk assessment could be difficult for a retail investor without a high degree of expertise, end quote. Does this sound familiar to you? It should. This is about the fifth or sixth country who has announced that they believe that normal people are a bit too daft, not too smart when it comes to investing in cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrency funds. The thing that we've normally heard over the last four to five years is that normal people should not have access to cryptocurrencies. Why? Because it's too dangerous. It's too terrible. What they should have access to are cryptocurrency funds, usually registered or regulated securities by their local security council. Therefore, these are the things that people should be able to get into. And then the idea now is, well, no, these are also things that normal people shouldn't get into. They simply don't understand what these things are and also shouldn't be allowed to get into these markets. So not only are countries telling you uh, that that your brain ain't big enough to get into normal cryptocurrencies, but even the things that they say that you should have gotten into that should have been regulated are now regulated, and you also should not get into those as well. Kind of weird, right? Uh, also, and I'll say this, this is the fifth time I think I'm saying this in the last half of a year. I find it very fascinating that no matter what the market is, Governments and corporations just don't ever want normal people to get into them. I'm not, no, I, I know exactly why it's money. They want all the money. They want all the money. They want all the power for themselves. Nothing speaks to this uh, than the, the AMC GameStop fiasco that we saw. It's been almost, once again, two years already. If you were not involved in that, watch a documentary on it. 
Because the craziest thing, if you actually watch the, the videos of the people who were complaining, and it was these hedge fund managers, it was all these people who had shorted the stock, who lost their positions, they were angry and tried to get the SEC to actually block normal every day, and they used the word P-O-O-R people multiple times from getting into the market because they didn't understand the market and therefore should not be in it. Part of the problem is, it takes about four or five days to actually learn about these markets to really understand the terms and the complexities inside of it. And then you can definitely trade inside the market yourself. This is what a lot of normal people did back in uh, 2020 and made a huge amount of money. There was one guy in particular that I will never, ever, 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 ever forget. Because because not many things make my blood boil. This guy was on CNBC and he sat there and he said, you know, it's, it's, it's a real shame that all these people are trying to get into stock trading and they don't really understand it. And the, the announcer was like something along the lines of, you know, a lot of people made really good money. Someone even um, announced that they made around $63,000. And he's like, I think that's just a shame. You know, you should be living your life, man. You should be going out and, and if, trying to find a girlfriend and trying to find the job. What are you, what are you doing online? And, and in, in that instance, you understand that these people don't care about any of us. That zero, zero percent. The idea that you made $63,000 in a two-month period was terrible. What, what are you doing, man? Go outside. Go find a girlfriend. Go get a real job, something that will stabilize you. Don't make tons of money like we do. And, and, and I mean, even the, the, the other interviews with these people talking about how much money they lost and, and how that should have been illegal. There should have been a failsafe to stop the rich people from losing any kind of money because they're only known to win. The point that I'm trying to make is multiple countries have come forward with this proposal that cryptocurrencies are terrible and normal people should have no access to them. And if you do have access to them, get ready to lose all of your money. We've heard that thousands of times before. The other point is they always say, well, let's regulate it. In a regulated space, you can have access to it as many times as you want. But now we keep hearing even the regulated stuff isn't meant for us. What I would love to see is, and we are never going to see this, is if a country actually put together a framework, a PDF, it could be 15 pages long, hear me out on this one, where they actually teach their citizens how these things work. Radical, right? Completely insane. How many of you went to school where you not only never learned about finance, you never learned about taxes or how to file your own taxes or or learned what a security was, what the CFTC was or what the SEC was? No financial terms. You never learned any of these things. Wouldn't it have been revolutionary if your country had taught you these financial terms or how they work or even had a day trip to one of, I mean, one of the buildings, one of the offices. It may not be the most exciting things for kids, but you would still remember these things inside of your head. Instead of banning the majority of 98% of people within your country who are not professional investors, imagine trying to teach them about these things. You can even have the last five pages of a 19-page e- uh, PDF letting them know the risks explicitly. You may lose all your money. This may happen. That may happen. Bitcoin is this. Bitcoin is that. Letting them really know, but letting them actually have both sides of the coins and letting them understand why you were only allowing the richest people on the planet and within your country to get into this. You've created something that's dangerous and not a people won't understand it. That's just for rich people because you expect the rich people to lose money? No, no, of course not. They are also going to be making tons of money off of this as well. Why can't normal people ever make money in any of these markets without people trying to restrict them? Remember, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to stop ranting about the, the whole AMC thing. Because remember when apps were going offline and people couldn't have access to their money and trading for the for the stocks that were doing exceptionally well and tons of people normal people were making really good money remember them going offline oh no sorry guys it's offline for a week why does this keep happening over and over why is it that everyone has to work every single day of their life until they're 75 years old and then they can go retire on a beach somewhere because they're drained and they're worn out and they have nothing else left to give that's why when we had news before in 2019, I'm pretty sure Russia was the first com- the first country to do this, 
where where they were like, oh no, mm, poor poor people don't have access to the cryptocurrency market. Rich people, however, do. There, there was even a fine. If you if you made less than X amount per year and tried to touch the crypto market, you would get fined. Imagine finding someone who barely has any money who could have made tons of money in the cryptocurrency market. Imagine telling your people in your country in 2017, 2018, what the cryptocurrency market was and telling them to invest in XRP, Ethereum when it was $8 or all these other coins, how rich these people would be and how much extra taxes they could also pay to the country and also buy actual property to build up the country themselves. Anyway, didn't mean to rant. It's simply, I, I saw this news and I was like, of course, because why, why would you choose anything else? Why would you choose to actually help your citizens and make sure that they have money for the future. Have you been paying attention to how high prices have been going? I sent my friend a photo. You can even type it in. If you if you search around on YouTube, type in like uh, not just inflation, but it's something like uh, like U.S. inflation rate or something like that. You'll have tons of news stories popping up. There are, I mean, this blew my mind across the range, just within the United States of cities, rent. Normal rent, nothing else, not even other things that you're buying. Just rent has gone up between 24 to 48 percent over the course of one year. One. That's not meat. That's not milk. That's not juice. That's not any other thing or clothing that you might also have to buy. I think within the UK, it was around 16 percent as well. How weird that all these people are making so much money. Have you, oh my gosh, I'm telling you, I watch so many documentaries. Watch a documentary. There was one, oh gosh, there were multiple. Uh, during the first time that people were told, no, go outside, uh, there's one about New York in particular. You can easily, I, 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 I think the channel that it was on is called DW, Deutsche Welle. There's, a, there's an English version of it, where they were discussing exactly, I mean, rich people, became wealthy during the last two years. And wealthy people are on another plateau that people can't even begin to imagine. This is why when we talk about a multi-trillion dollar asset company getting into the cryptocurrency space because they know that at some point Bitcoin's price is going to leave $40,000 and go to a million dollars, untold levels of wealth. Un I mean, unfathomable. And to have a situation where you can make sure that everyone in your country has a slice of this pie and you adamantly make sure that the answer is always no. Stay in your place. Continue working until we automate everything and then you have no job. It drives me up the actual wall. I did not mean to rant. I just, it, I mean, it really gets me going because I don't under, why, why, why are governments so concerned with making sure that people stay in their lane forever, are just completely unhappy for the rest of their lives? Anyway, so here's the actual uh, PDF for it right here. It's 33 pages long. Uh, I'm not going to scroll through the entire thing because that would take a very long time. Yeah, and there's somebody smiling. Wonderful. All righty. Uh, nonsense. It, it, mm, makes me so angry. So, so angry. Hmm. Right. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. <sighs> GBU Wally, formerly known as Professor Wally. Darren Davis, How's Life Austin, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move. I black out. You, you understand? I, I actually black out. When I have those moments, because I I'm I'm full of not anger and rage, but like it, it makes me so annoyed. And appropriately, let's move on. Chris, Hakeem Wilkins, Empire Queen, Stake It with Valor, Fud Wiser, Mortified, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealers Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Not Brain. Captain something in the Z-Way lay, Crypto Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos was like, Mo Barazzi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy, all good. Space Case, Need a Miracle, Paternoster, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolek Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila Dahan, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Ebibliophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam, Grasic, Mohammed Maroney, 
Master Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavodi, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, Cow Skip Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> Anytime Fitness Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola and Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who left a like, left a comment, has subscribed, or is still here listening to me. I'm surprised that my face isn't, isn't red right now. Like, I'm actually, I can still feel the flame burning. If you are still here watching this video, <laughs> type in the, I, I'll never get over this. Type in the name Magic Internet Money. Why it's called Magic Internet Money, I don't know. But it's called Magic Internet Money. At the moment, Bitcoin is at 44400 Oh, it was all fours. $424. It is up by 2.4%. There was a little dip, and now it looks like the price might be moving back up. Ethereum is at three up by 3.8%. It is at $3,200. Uh, you know, all the news we were just talking about as far as Ethereum's price and where people are expecting it to go. There was, I think, the craziest one so far that we heard this year was the $12,000 Ethereum. I myself am expecting, and I'll be completely honest with you, anywhere between a five dollars to $7,000 Ether around the time or like a month after we have the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade like actually set in stone. Like, bam, it's going to happen. It is happening. It has happened. Usually what happens is once we hear about the the metrics of said new chain or the upgrade, i.e., we've upgraded, is anyone using it? How much usage is there? Are people being able to get their staking rewards properly? How much? How many coins are being burned? Once we have, it usually takes about around, around a month. That's when the prices usually tend to pick up. It's similar to Bitcoin having its having, and then you know the price kind of you know lays sideways until we realize exactly how much fewer coins there are, how much network activity there is, and then the price ends up moving back up as well. Binance Coin is up by two percent. XRP is up by three point. Five Shiba Inu is up by 6.3%. Crypto Coin is up by 6.4%. Polygon is up by 4 as well. Anything else crazy? FTT is up by 3. Ethereum Classic is up by 5.8. Tron is up by 3. Sure, why not? VeChain Thor is up by 5. Axie Infinity is up by 5. Filecoin is up by 3. Com Compound Ether. All right. Monero is up by 4%. Theta token is up by 10% as well. IOTA, still number 49. Not really understanding that. Uh, One Harmony is up by 6% as well. Isn't that crazy? It's still number, it's coin number 49 after even being down. I, 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 don't, I don't understand this coin at all. Anyway, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you have a wonderful day. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, I sincerely do hope that it's absolutely fantastic. Watch some of the documentaries I was telling you about. It's so, I mean, especially during the time period where we were not allowed to, you know, I absorbed so many documentaries. I love documentaries in the first place. I love like learning about things, but I usually have an affinity uh, for uh, money-based documentaries. I, I just kind of my thing. I, I'm into finance. I love financial documentaries, but the stuff that's going on now out of this world, out of this world. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.